Good morning students. We are reading the chapter The Making of a Scientist, a story of a leading scientist named Richard A. Bright. He was a curious child right from the beginning years of his life. He had started collecting butterflies in his childhood and by the time he is in the second grade he had already gathered all the 25 species found in his hometown. Also, he collected coins, fossils and rocks. One day his mother gave him a book named The Travel of Monarch 10. This book has been a turning point in his life and introduced him to the world of science. He experienced the real science in country science fair and moreover he understood that to win something he needs to do something extraordinary later for his eighth grade he selected the assignment of finding the cause of viral sickness that killed almost all the monarch butterflies every year today we are going to find out more facts related to his life and his journey so let's commence our today's discussion yesterday we have read that a bright when he was in seventh class he took part in the county science fair but he was not able to win any prize there and at that moment of age he got to know what was the meaning of real science when he observed other students and their projects in that exhibition he showed frog tissue slides under a microscope but realized that all the winners had actually tried to perform an ex an real experiment and not just make a neat display out of their projects he had already started developing competitive spirit inside him it was the time when he tried a lot to win the next year project and he took the Dr. Uruk Hart's help in that also. He thought and realized that he had maximum knowledge about the subject of insects and for the next year he started planning to win. He wrote to Dr. Uruk Hart regarding the county fair and he got a number of ideas from him. He remained busy with those ideas all throughout his high school and won many prizes continuously. In his 8th class, he tried to find the cause of a viral disease that killed nearly all monarch caterpillars every few years. Ibrahim thought that the disease was being transmitted through beetles. So he started raising caterpillars in the presence of beetles to find out the real cause. It was of no use but when he showed that he had tried such an experiment he won something for his project. For the next year he tried the theory that visory butterflies copy monarchs. He put forward the theory that visory butterflies exactly look like monarchs because monarchs do not taste good to the birds and birds like to eat visories so the more the visory looked like the monarch the less likely it is that visory would be eaten by a bird so that is by a visory butterfly copy monarch butterfly he wanted to show this thing in his project that would be a bird eat monarchs or not he found out that the sterling bird would prefer eating only a monarch and later research showed that the visory's butterfly copied the monarch and this project won him the first division in the zoology department and the third overall position in the county science fair during his second year of high school richard started a research from which he found about an unknown insect hormone 
that later helped him in his new theory about the life of cells as well the question from where the research started was very simple as to what was the purpose of the 12 tiny gold spots on a monarch pupa most of the people said that the spots were made for making it look more decorative but dr ukhart did not believe in what others said to find the answer to this question a bright and another excellent science student together made a device that proved that these spots produced a hormone necessary for the full development of a butterfly from a pupa with this a bright won the first prize at the county science fair and the entry to international science and engineering fair there his project won third prize for zoology he also got a chance to work at the entomology laboratory of the walter reed army institute of research he continued his work with the monarch pupa as a high school junior and that led him to win the first prize at the international science fair after winning this prize he also got a chance to work at the army laboratory during summers and then during his senior year he tried another experiment in which he grew cells from a monarch swing in a culture and showed that cells would divide and develop into normal butterfly wing scales provided that they were treated with the hormone from the gold spots this research of his won the first prize at the international fair and he spent his summer after graduation doing more and more research on the subject at the army laboratory and the laboratory of us department of agriculture then he worked some more on the hormone released from the gold spots during the following summers at the laboratory of the agricultural department there he identified the chemical structure of the hormone using the lab's special equipments after one and a half years a bright got the idea for his new theory which was about the cell life the idea came to him when he was looking at the x-ray photos of the chemical structure of the hormone he did not get any excited about this discovery as soon as he found it but came to a realization that his years of study on the insect hormone had solved one of the puzzles of biology it had solved the mystery of how cells read the blueprint of its dna he found as the dna is in the nucleus of a cell that controls heredity therefore it determines the form and the function of a cell hence dna is the blueprint of life then ibright and his roommate made drawings and plastic models for the theory which showed how it was possible and later wrote a paper which explained the process it did not surprise the people who knew him that he graduated from harvard and with the highest honors and stood second in his class among 1510 students he then became a graduate student researcher at the harvard university and also started doing practical experiments to test his theory it was expected that if the theory proved to be correct then it would be a big step towards understanding the complex system of life and also would lead to a new ideas for preventing certain types of cancer and other diseases too 
so this showed how his research on the monarch pupa led him to a theory about cell life he had been keen in science ever since he started collecting butterflies but this did not keep him away from his other interests in life he was a champion debater a great public speaker and a good boat racer he was also an all-round outdoor sports person along with being an expert photographer he was great at capturing nature and scientific subjects as he was a great student and always used to score good he used to focus his extra energy on debating and model united nations club he also used to admire his social studies teacher and an advisor to both the clubs mr richard a welrer a bright thought that his teacher was the right man as he was the one who used to open his mind to new ideas his teacher was impressed with the fact that how a bright would give an extra 3 to 4 hours of effort at night for the debate research apart from the time that he used to give his butterfly research and his other interests he added that he was competitive but not in a bad sense because he did not win to get prizes or for the sake of winning but because he wanted to be the best at whatever he did this is what makes a good scientist he needs a first rate mind along with curiosity and an added will to win for the right since the time richard's mother got him the book about migration of monarchs his curiosity towards science has just grown so students here we have finished the discussion of this interesting chapter a real story about mr richard ebright his journey his childhood his interest his hobby and how he became a renowned scientist in the world of science so this chapter the making of a scientist richie as his mother used to call him he was a very curious child right from his childhood he had started collecting butterflies in his childhood and when he was 2 years old he had already collected all the 25 species found near his hometown he thought it to be an end of butterfly collection until day until one day his mother brought him a book named the travels of monarch 10 this was a turning point in his life and he got much more interested in dealing with science he started with tagging butterflies which a task given at the end of the book that his mother bought for him then when he first entered the county science fair with a slide of the frog tissue he lost everybody wants something but his project did not win any prize he was sad but also understood that to win he needed to do real experiments and not just make neat and clean models then he wrote down to dr okhart at the university of toronto asking him for ideas to make projects he stayed busy during his high school working on the long list sent to him by dr okhart then for the next year's fair he chose the project of looking at the viral disease that killed nearly all the monarch caterpillars every few years he thought that the reason for this could be a beetle so he started raising caterpillars in the presence of beetles but could not get any results so when he showed his trial experiments at the county science fair his project won a prize then for the next year he made an experiment to show that the visery butterflies copied monarch this project also made him win many prizes 
then he started his research as to the purpose of the 12 golden spots on the monarch back of monarch 12 golden spots on the back of monarch pupa everybody believed that it was just a design but dr okha thought otherwise then a bright and another brilliant science student got together and made a device that could show that the gold spots were responsible for releasing a hormone that was necessary for its growth with the help of sophisticated instruments at one of the labs he got a chance to work and found the chemical structure of the hormone in the gold spots then one day while looking at the photo of the chemical structure he solved one of the biggest puzzles of life he came to know how a cell blueprints its dna it was a big breakthrough and was published in a magazine he also had many other interests and also admired his social studies teacher as he was the one who used to give him new ideas every time he was good at debating public speaking and a great canoeist he never used to win for the sake of winning or for prizes but because he wanted to be the best at whatever he used to do it is shown in this chapter that with the right amount of curiosity a bright mind and the will to win for right reasons are the qualities needed to be a scientist his mother also played a big role in making him what he was as it was she who supported him throughout his journey and brought him the book the travels of monarch 10 which aroused his curiosity in the field of science so students here our discussion of this chapter is over I think you all have enjoyed this real story of Mr. Abright and you all have got this idea also that hard work and perseverance and consistency are required material if you would like to achieve something big in life then you need a deep consistency I hope you all have enjoyed the reading of this chapter and you all are aware about the new theories and research done by Mr. Abright so students we will meet in our next session till then take care of yourself thank you